the committee on parole is called to order. Today is November 4th, 2021. The time is 8.33 a.m. Members of the panel today are Bonnie Jackson, Pearl Wise, and Jim Wise will be chairing today. The panel is conducting parole hearings today by Zoom technology in response to the governor's proclamation relative to COVID-19 and public hearings. We chose this platform so that it allows observation and input by the members of the public. Support staff located at DSC headquarters and boundaries are Teresa Bohalik. They are here. John Boja. Leah Roten. And Francis Abbott. Our remote location is at East Baton Rouge. Would the staff at East Baton Rouge please introduce themselves? Lieutenant Bob, Administrative Lieutenant over intake and release. Thank you, Lieutenant. Would the offender please introduce yourself for the record, stating your name and DOC number? Roger Gibbons, 723612. Thank you. Just real quick, let me introduce our participants. We have two attorneys. We have Mr. Brian Steele, and we have Mr. Ronald Healy. Then we have two participants who are here in support and would like to speak. We have Mr. Jeremy Carter, employer, and Terrence Granger, bodyguard. Mr. Wise. Yes, ma'am. Thank you all and good morning. Uh, Ms. Yeah. Gibbings, there's a, there should be a, if you would, state your name and DOC number. Would you give us 7276121? Okay, sir. There should be a parole revocation questionnaire form uh, right. at the very bottom. It should have your defender's name, Frederick Gibbons, 9321 uh, be the date on it. Do you see that? Yes, sir. Everything correct on that piece of paper there that you're looking at in front of you? Yes, sir. Okay. At this time, I'm going to be reading out your uh, parole revocation. Uh, uh, did you request an appointed count? Did you request an appointed counsel uh, during your preliminary hearing, or did you have a, a, a counsel on retain? Uh, counsel on retain. Okay, sir. So, sir, if you would state state his name. Uh, Ronald Haley and Brian Steele. Ronald Haley and Brian. Yes, sir. Okay, sir. Okay, I'm gonna read you out your rules violation. You plead guilty or not guilty to your rules violation. Rule number five, Agent Sullivan reported that on a search warrant of Mr. Gibbons' residence in Miami, Florida was executed by the FBI on 7-21-2021, and there were several firearms discovered at the residence along with ammunition. Guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. Not guilty. Okay, at this time, your case has been assigned to myself, and we're gonna be at, I'm going to be asking you some questions. During the time of the search warrant uh, that was, was uh, given to you, who the the farms that was found in the residence, whose farms were they? Security. Okay, they were security. The, the, your, I know you had a parole officer, and the parole officer, one of the things says that you're not to have farms in your residence, is that correct? I, I, I know it's for possession of patrol, but uh, I think so. You think so? Now you were you were on parole. Yes, sir. Because it, it, it was never in my possession. I didn't know about it. You didn't know about it. No, sir. Do you know that when you when you have farms in your residence, you, you're not to have farms because of your charge. You were uh, charged uh, simple criminal damage to property, legal use of weapons, and dangerous. And also, uh, conditions four and five, you pled not guilty. Your expiration date is on 1-21-2023. When you were detained was on 7-22-2021 on your warrant. Uh, 
when the FBI came in and found the found the guns, uh, what did you tell them? I wasn't there. I was at the studio. I was uh, I was working. Okay, but that was a residence you were living in. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. During this time, uh, how long when you were on paper? How long had you been on paper uh, with a three years pro? And eight, three years and eight months. Three years and eight months. Have you had any problems in the last three years and eight months? No, sir. You know, number five says that I shall not have possession or control of any farm or dangerous weapon. You signed that piece of paper on 529-18. Yes, sir. Correct? Yes, sir. And the farms were in, at your residence. Does your attorney have any, does one of your attorneys have anything he would like to say, Mr. Ronald Haley? Yes, sir. And thank you for allowing me to speak, Mr. Wise. Um, so this is a, a very unique set of circumstances, uh, sir. It, it is not your, your typical firearms in the residence. Um, my client's uh, record label, and we have members on the record label that are here, uh, hired a private security firm to protect Mr. Givens. Uh, Mr. Givens was in Gretna, Louisiana in July of 2020 uh, without security, without firearms, um, at a video shoot. At that time, assailants um, attacked his uh, SUV that he was driving back to the airport in and riddled it with over 28 bullets. Uh, Jefferson Parish Sheriff's Office came out assessed the scene, there were no firearms found on Mr. Givens or any of his participants at, uh, or occupants of, of the vehicle. At that time, and Mr. Carter's on the call today, he hired Mr. Granger to do security for Mr. Givens at a full-time basis. Um, this particular search warrant was not a search warrant that was directed at Mr. Givens, but in fact, somebody else that was in his residence that the Honorable Judge Torval Smith uh, ordered this person to be in the residence. It was a search warrant due to an arrest warrant for and Mr. Mayoshi Edwards. That weekend was the Rolling Loud concert in Miami, which is a huge concert with musical acts from all over the world that comes in. It was actually the, the biggest concert that my client was scheduled to be one of the headliners that he's had in his young career. That weekend, my client was housed up uh, in the studio all weekend. And in the studio, there's bunks and, and places for him to stay. Um, Mr. Granger would, would testify uh, to this committee today that the firearms were placed in his residence for his protection once he returned home from the concert. Um, the FBI noted in, in this reports that the uh, firearms weren't in uh, out in the open. They were in a laundry room. They were in another escape room, another closet, that if somebody did follow them home and attack the house, that there were, they were uh, points of escape and points where people can lock themselves down. Assuming nobody will have followed them home, Mr. Granger would have gotten out of the vehicle, retrieved the firearms, and put them in his vehicle. Um, Mr. Givens was not home at the time the firearms were placed there. Mr. Givens was not there at the time the firearms were, were discovered. I, I do understand from a uh, black letter of the law standpoint that Mr. Givens, by the firearms being in Mr. Givens' home, that they weren't supposed to be there. But Mr. Givens was not aware that those firearms were there. This was strict security protocol by Mr. Granger. And Mr. Granger is... Um, available uh, today for the panel to speak with where he can answer questions as it relates to um, his uh, security protocols. Okay. But one of the rules that was stated that he signed that rule while he was on parole, but that he could not have firearms at his residence. And that's the bottom line of he is not to have firearms at his residence. Uh, Mr. Wise, I would uh, just contend to the fact that, and I do understand that, that Mr. Givens was not aware that the firearms were placed in his residence for his safety. Well, when he hired someone to do his security, that was one of the things that was his responsibility to go over with because this is very, very important while he's on, while he's on paper. You, you understand that, Mr. Hayes? I, I do. I, I'm not going to contend with that, sir. Okay. And he, uh, 
I would like to listen to some of the people, unless anyone, Miss Bonnie or Miss Pearl, has anything they'd like to say. I'd like to hear from some of the other uh, speakers here before we go on. Listen, Gibbon, I, I would, okay, go ahead, Miss uh, Pearl Wise, but I would like to question some of the speakers as opposed to uh, Mr. Gibbons. So, some, okay. Uh, Mr. Gibbons, was uh, the incident happened in Jefferson Parish. Was there ever any kind of a threat on your personal safety while you were in Florida? Florida, I, I always get threats, but I, no, no, I haven't had an attack on me in Florida. Okay, not not like the, the gunfire you had in Jefferson Parish. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And when and I, when you hired your security person, did you make him aware that you were on parole supervision? Yes, ma'am. They know not to. I, I don't never want to know if a gun is on me. You know what I'm saying? They, they know. Okay. Okay. I never. I tell. I tell them never have it in my presence. Oh. Okay. 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 In your presence. Okay. Yes. And that was your understanding of that condition of parole was that the guns were not supposed to be in your presence. Yes, ma'am. So that's why they were so adamant in saying that when you come home, they remove the guns from the hidden spots, from the spots where they're hidden. Yes, ma'am. So how, how could you conceive that a security company was going to protect you? Yes, ma'am. What, what was the workaround? How, how can they provide you protection? What were they supposed to do? And you on parole and can't be around guns. Watch, watch, because I deal with a lot of people on a daily basis, so I'm not able to watch all my surroundings at all times. So that's what they, they, basically my eyes that I can't see. Okay, okay. I, sometimes they can spot threats that I can't see. You know, I got to take pictures, shake hands, and all that stuff. So sometimes okay. I can't see everything that's going on. Okay. Did you expect them to be armed when they are watching for you? I, I do. Okay. But, okay. The but, but, but they are armed on their own person, right? Yes, yes ma'am. Because at the end of the day, I really was against uh, security for a long time. But after that attack, my mom and everybody else begged me to get security. So. Okay. Now, I, want, I want to add one thing. I, I know this from working with Mr. Gibbons for a long time. Even when he's in the car, the, the guns are never in the car with him. Security has their own vehicles that are following him in the front and the back. So even okay. the vehicles that he's in, uh, there are no firearms in there. Okay, okay. Uh, the, the situation, the incident in Jefferson Parish, did you report that to your parole officer? I, I didn't. You did no, not? No, 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 ma'am. So, this, so, this, so when, this, when this happened, this was your parole officer's first time hearing about the yes ma'am i uh i actually when it happened i called my lawyer he had he couldn't make it out there on the scene at the time so he had somebody else to come out and when everything happened they did with me as a victim and stuff and they, they told me i didn't have to tell him so, okay, I, I okay. Uh, a police report was made on that incident huh, in july of 2020 okay police report was made but you never reported to your parole officer July 20, 20 or, or the incident of the shooting? Uh, yeah, the shooting. When was it? August of 2020. Okay, I don't know. I, I wrote down July 2020 when I heard somebody talking. I'm talking about the Jefferson Parish where you were, where your, your vehicle was shot up. Yes, ma'am. I was labeled as a victim. Say what now? I was labeled as a victim. Yes, right. Okay. All right. Thank you. That's all I had. Thanks for answering my question. Yes, That's all I had, Chairman. I would like to hear some of the speakers now. One of the speakers, Mr. Tarrant Granger, uh, anything you'd like to say on his behalf? Yes, sir. How you doing? Uh, I'm Terrence. And uh, with the weapons, with the protocol, uh, I knew that the defendant would not be standing, staying at the house. So I had them placed in the house. And upon his arrival, we were going to remove them, as said. So I don't know. I didn't realize that it would be an issue even if he wasn't at the house that they could not be there. We just wanted to protect because pretty much rolling loud, hundreds of thousands of people come from all over the world. So we just wanted to be safe and sorry. Well, 
sometimes you know that the police this is a police matter if it's if it's that bad a situation the police should be notified and, and be able to be there or whatever the police should do i, I don't think y'all can take it up on yourself and him being on him being on pro there's not to have any guns at his residence which they are guns that was guns at his residence that was one of the the rules that he violated where guns would be at his residence i thought i thought because that was his business residence and not his actual home address residence that it would be okay being that it was work related and not his actual home address because his home address is in Louisiana well, and his, his work address is the Miami household. Well, he's not to have guns around him at any time. That's one of the things. Okay. Residents or any other time. But anyway, uh, is, it, is that all you have your statement? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, I see there's speaker, Mr. Jeremy Carter, if you would unmute your mic. Unmute your mic, Mr. Carr. Good morning. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes, sir. Good morning. Good morning to the panel. Good morning, everyone. Uh, so, yes, my name is uh, Jeremy Carter. I'm general manager for the label. Uh, we employ Mr. Givens, and that's Say La Vie Productions. Uh, the first thing I want to do uh, before I say anything or answer any questions is uh, on behalf of the label, I wanna to apologize to this board and I also wanna to apologize to Mr. Givens. Um, I think we're in this situation uh, based on a lot of the executive decisions that were made by the label. Um, I will be candid, I will be transparent, I will be straightforward. Uh, when we signed Mr. Givens, when we found out about Mr. Givens' legal issues in Louisiana, we had our legal team look at the complete docket. Uh, we had our legal team look at the parole documents. Uh, our legal team advised us that while Mr. Givens couldn't be in possession of any firearms, that we were able to surround him with security. Uh, we had a long Zoom meeting. Uh, we went through a lot of bashing about constructive possession, about actual possession, about dominion, about control. We asked 30 questions back and forth. They told us that we could surround Mr. Givens with security. Um, so what's happening to Mr. Givens right now is completely our fault. Mr. Givens, we do apologize. That's why I'm here today. The label begged me to be here today. It's very early on my end of town, but they begged me to be here today. Um, Mr. Givens, we look at Mr. Givens. I know I'm logged in as an employer. Um, like I said, I'm general manager for the label. We look at Mr. Givens as an asset. Um, we're not perfect people. Um, sometimes I do lose sleep at night because we do look at our artists as assets. Um, so we protect our artists the same way uh, a billionaire would protect their 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 diamond their diamond cachet. Um, and we do that because Mr. Givens makes us money. Um, and if Mr. Givens gets shot kill, we lose money, and we run a business here. Uh, we respect Mr. Givens, we respect what he does for the label, but at the same time, Mr. Givens is an asset, and I hate to say that, but that's just how uh, we look at it as a label, you know, so we do feel responsible for that. Uh, we are the uh, employers, or we subcontracted Flex Securities. Uh, Flex Securities moves on our call, on our K, uh, on this particular event, Mr. Gibbons was actually preparing for one of the biggest groundbreaking events of his life, of his musical career, and that's Rolling Loud. Um, when we got that invitation, when we got that booking, hey, Mr. Gibbons, we're going to, stage name is Fredo Bang. Hey, Fredo Bang's going to Rolling Loud. Let's make this happen. That was the, the, that was the theme of our office at the time, by whatever means necessary. Um, Mr. Givens has received a lot of threats in Miami, as well of our, as, you know, a few of our other artists. Um, the rap industry is a lot different from other industries. 
Um, there's a, the fans are different. Um, and with the rap industry, there's just more competition. Um, so yeah, threats have been made on Mr. Gibbons life in Miami. We have taken action. And as you can see, Mr. Gibbons is here. So we have done well. Um, as it relates to the same event, we had two artists who, we had one artist that spot him, got him. He was shot, almost killed. Um, and that was even, you know, with, with the minimal security, not the security that we give Mr. Gibbons, but with minimal security, he was shot and almost killed. And we have another affiliate artist, Wiz, and he was killed. He's currently deceased. Um, so we do these things for a reason. So I don't want, you know, the board to think that we overreact with our security, but we have to protect our asset. Um, in this particular case, we were preparing Mr. Gibbons for Rolling Loud. On behalf of the label, I can personally assure you that Mr. Gibbons was not at his residence during the time that these weapons were present. We have flex securities there to protect the residents. Unfortunately, uh, I don't know who did this, but Mr. Gibbons, uh, this address is Mr. Thank you, Mr. Carter. Okay, am I out of time? Thank you. We, uh, yes, sir. Oh, I am so sorry. Here I do apologize. Mr. I didn't know. Uh, is there any other speakers that was going to be here today speaking on your behalf? No, sir. Mr. Frederick, do you have anyone else that be speaking on your behalf? No, sir. You know, at, uh, at this time, I, uh, Miss Bonnie Jackson, do you have anything you'd like to say? No, thank you. I'm good. Miss Pearl. Okay. At this time, Miss Givens, you know, the bottom line goes down to it. You are on parole. Yes, sir. You had obligations you had to meet to do on, while you were on parole. Yes, sir. You signed a piece of paper saying that that you would follow all the rules set by pro. Yes, sir. Is there anything you'd like to say to the board before we vote? Um, I'd like to apologize for um, being in this situation. Um, like I said, I, I, I never have been around a firearm. Everybody knows not to have me around one. I understand that I've been violated for, for being inside my house. I just had to, I, I had to get security at some point in my career. So I apologize. Mr. Wise, I do want to add that Mr. Givens has not had any parole violations other than this for the three years that, that he's been mm -hmm. on. He's been a model mm -hmm. citizen. Um, the night that the search warrant happened, Mr. Givens actually called me at 1127. I remember the exact time. He said, Mr. Haley, would you mind calling my parole officer with me in the morning to explain what happened? Um, I, I was not there. Um, you know, I know the rap industry can be a, a rough industry, but I think it says a lot for Mr. Gibbons that he's really stayed out of trouble. And Mr. Gibbons has not been arrested for, technically, this is felon in possession of a firearm if they found it. And he has not been charged in federal court in the Southern District of Miami. And he has not been charged in state court in Miami. And although I do know probable cause for an arrest is not um, the standard by which a violation can happen, I do want the board to take note that he has not been charged in criminal court at all for these firearms. And I think that speaks to the veracity of, of his story. And that's all I'm gonna say. Thank you so much for your time. At this time, I recommend executive session to, to discuss confidential matters related to this case. Okay. A second. Roll call, Ms. Pearl? Yes. Mr. Wise? Yes. And Ms. Jackson? Yes. 